All right, so we are literally on lesson 13. Um, this after the uh, procedural, the sequential, the decisions, the iteration and repetition is one of the most important parts of uh, this pro program, this course. Of course, it's object-oriented programming. Um, so now we get to create things. Um, again, I told you before, it's, it's kind of like the small letter G, God, because I can create, the idea originally was you could take any uh, thing that you could see, any earth, you know, whatever, not, you know, any object and make it electronic. Uh, you can make an electronic version of it maybe. Um, but even farther than that, you can make up, you, you know, it, it doesn't need to be a real thing. You can make imaginary things, abstract things, and you get to name it what you want. And then you get to do, uh, create what kind of, <clears throat> what's it going to look like? Uh, what's it going to be able to do? All those kinds of things, okay? We've been using these all along, like the scanner and random. Those are objects that we create. Uh, we call it instantiate. We take and create an instance of. I'm gonna bring up a list of vocabulary that I uh, want you to know. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. I guess I should ask you guys, can you even hear me right now? Yes. Okay. All right. So there's my list of vocabulary. And of course, the object, if, if this was an English class, the object there would be a noun. Okay. And then let's see here attributes would be like an adjective. So I create maybe a thing called person. Okay, so that'd be my object. And then an adjective of that would be uh, date of birth, hair color, height, weight, all the things about it. And then the methods would be like verbs. What can it do? What can that object do? Okay. I'm missing one here. Again, this should be a class. It is like a blueprint that we to create an object from. Okay. Kind of like a blueprint that we're going to create our object from. And when we create the object, we instantiate it. We create an instance. And I can create as many as I want. Okay, we can make as many as we want. In other words, uh, let's say I had a blueprint of a house. Well, I can make as many houses of that type that I wanna make. It really doesn't matter. Um, if I made an instant or if I made a class called vehicles, I could make as many vehicles as I wanted from that class but each one of them would be an instance, okay? Um, encapsulation, how many, let's just say, most of, you, most of you guys have driven a car, right? No, yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, so how many of you know how many horsepower your car has? No idea, no, I have no yeah. idea. 
How about what firing order the pistons fire on? No idea, right? How does the computer work in your car that makes it fire? You don't know that, right? All you probably know, most people nowadays anyway, is you turn the key, you step, you put it in gear. You don't even know how it works, how, it, how the gears work uh, down in the transmission. And you step on the gas and it goes. You come to a stop sign and you put on the brake don't really know how that works, probably some type of friction and the car stops, okay? It's all hidden from you. They don't want you to know. In fact, if you buy a new Mercedes, you can't even see the engine. You open up the hood, it's a big sheet of plastic over the engine. They don't even want you checking the oil, okay? So that's what we do. Encapsulation is how we hide things, hide attributes, and that attributes from uh, those who don't need to know. Okay, so we encapsulate things. Uh, Setters and getters. Setters are, you're going to see them today, are when we uh, put values into a variable. Getters are when we retrieve values from a variable. Okay. Inheritance is no different than when you inherit something from your parents, your grandparents or whatever. We can create a class, a super class, okay? And then that super class can, we can have, a, let's say a parent class that inherits the attributes from the super class. And then we could create another class, let's call it a child class, that inherits those from both its parents and its grandparents, just like you did, just like the biological um, passing down of your hair color, your eye color, your height, all that, your physical uh, attributes. Uh, we can do that with our different classes that we create. Now, just like your parents in that, you cannot, they cannot inherit anything from you, except maybe high blood pressure and a headache, okay? Um, for the most part, it's a downhill um, a system, okay? So it's like a hierarchical down to the lower classes, okay? So th these are the terms I need you to know. You need to be able to speak these terms when you go into the next semester. This last one down here I wanna talk about is kind of an example. And I use this all the time because I like it and it's educational. Um, Can you guys still see the phone? My has changed to real tech audio. Why is that? Hang on a second. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Did yeah. it change though? It got a little louder. No. No. 
can't hear you. Uh, I can't hear you right now. You hear me now? Yes. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> okay, where was I? Do, 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 do. I need to go back to my hate when this happens. Sharing. Why is this happening? Jeez. For some reason I lost my Okay. No, we'll go back to this. Can you see that now? Hello? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So chairness okay so in plato's allegory i think that's how you spell it right. chapter seven of the republic philosopher philosopher uh, Plato talks about are you guys familiar with this at all? The allegory of the cave? Never heard of it. In, in the allegory of the cave basically what happens is um, all humanity is in a cave and uh, we're chained together uh, and facing this wall in the cave, okay? And uh, behind us, unbeknownst to us, there's a fire and it's kind of like, uh, have you ever played like wall puppet, you know, uh, shadow puppets on the wall with a flashlight where you can make animals and everybody goes, ooh, that's a rabbit. Ooh, that's a crocodile, whatever. Well, it's kind of like that. Okay, kicked up a notch. And so humanity, so behind us is this fire. And every once in a while, an object goes in front of the fire and it's projected on the wall in front of us. And over time, we have named those things. So up on the wall might be an, uh, an object and we go, oh, that's a chair. And how do we know it's a chair? Well, we've seen it yesterday. It had four legs yesterday projected up on the wall. And so we've named this object that looks like you could sit on it with a back on it. We've named that a chair, okay? And a little while later, uh, a picture shows up or a, is projected on the wall. And it might be a, uh, uh, a pen, something as simple as a pen. A little while later, a cup shows up. A little while later, a fork shows up. So we've named these things, okay? These things that we're seeing though are not the real thing. They're just instances of the almighty thing, okay? What I would say is the thing that's behind us is like the almighty chair, okay? At some point in history, in our history, they sitting around a cave or whatever, Somebody said, oh, you know what? This is a chair, okay? We're gonna call this chair. And I'm not talking about languages. I don't care if it's Spanish or whatever. I'm talking, they might've just went, mm -hmm, and that meant chair, I don't know. But I'm saying that at some point, somebody named that thing. Like in your bedroom, somebody decided that a bed, you know, the thing you lay on and sleep at at night is called a bed the thing that you hop on and pedal is a bicycle. Somebody had to name those things. And at some point in history, there was the almighty chair, okay? 
the first one that we create. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. We can create the first one of anything, okay, that we want. And then from the blueprint, the, the idea that we have, we can create instances of that object, okay? In the real story, this is Doug's take. Uh, in the real story, what happens is one of the people in the chain gets away. The philosopher gets away, he breaks with the idea that what they're seeing is reality. And he's able to turn around and see what reality really is. And he goes outside, he's blinded by the sun, he goes back in the cave and tries to tell everybody that, hey, this is what we're seeing is just instances of the real world. Um, so that's kind of uh, uh, an abstract look at what we're gonna do. The next thing you need to realize is that um, we're doing this as one person, okay? In reality, this would be like, I'm gonna give you an example of how many people are involved in what we're gonna do as one person and why you have to separate those things, okay? First of all, if you were gonna, I want to uh, sell houses, okay? I'm a speculator, I have some money, I'm gonna build houses and sell them to people. So I contact, so I'm the number one person. Then I contact an architect and I tell the architect what I want, okay? And that architect draws up the blueprint, okay? So there's two people. Then the architect gives that blueprint to my contractors, or let's just say I have a general contractor, a builder, okay? Who actually builds the building. That's my third person. And then I have the person that buys and uses the house that's my fourth person. In our programs that we're going to do, you have to think like that, okay? That somebody's going to tell you, this is what I want. Then you're going to create that blueprint of the object that that person wants. Then you're going to create the code to make it create that, okay? Like the builder. And then you have the person that's eventually going to use the program, okay? And the other thing about that is not everybody should be able to see what the person above them is doing. In our case, you will, because you're gonna be doing all the parts, okay? But like, I don't think any of you, have any of you gone in and looked at what is the code behind creating a scanner? You know, there's code out there. It isn't magic. Somebody had to create the scanner that we use to get data into our programs. So there's, a, there's code out there. There's code out there to do that. Do you know how it works? No, we don't know. It's encapsulated. We don't go and change that. We just use it. It's kind of like you drive in your car. You turn the key, right? And it works. We plug the scanner in and it works, okay? Into our programs and then the user can put in data, okay? So that's hidden from us, the actual code behind what the scanner does or what the random does, okay? We create an instance of those objects um, for our use in our programs. So once again, I'll expect you to know these, this vocabulary here. All right, let me stop sharing that. And then I will move over here to our little buddy, Apache NetBeans and share that. Why is this not 
can't see my stuff down at the bottom here. Okay, there's some of it. All right. Okay, so we're going to create a program today. So we need a new project. And then uh, ant is good and then next. And let's just call it um, dog show. All right. And this will be our project. Uh, Acme AKC dog show. And this will be dog show. And today's date, we're on the 20th of April 2021. And author and purpose. Okay, and then we're gonna clean this up a little bit. We will need a scanner to import. Okay. So we'll just say java.utility. And my computer will lock up probably. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always does it. Someday I'm going to fix that. And dog show, public gather, that's good. And uh, let's move this down. Oh, there's another keyword I, you need to add to your list. And that's a constructor. Constructor, add that to, we need to add that to our vocabulary list. Constructors are a special type of method that we use to create instances from. Special method to create instances from. So put that in your notes. Okay, so we've got that. And then we can just put our little goofy divider in. And this is our void main. And we're pretty much done with this. Go ahead and save it for now anyway. So you should have that. And then give me two minutes here. I need to uh, be right back.
Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. King, don't sound so excited, dude. All right. So we have this little bit of code here. Now you can see here, we've got our package. We're gonna create another file inside this package. All we're gonna do is go up here to new file. And I want you to create, it's a Java class. And we're just gonna call it dog, D-O-G. Okay, so it should look like this. There's no main, nothing like that. Okay. We can put it like that. I'm going to go back over to dog show and get um, this up here. And just paste it in up here except that now my this will be dog.java. And here, All right, and later on, we're probably gonna need a scanner over here. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm sitting right here. Notice the name of the file has to be the name of the class. The name of the file has to be the same as the name of the class. All right. Now, we need to think of things that dogs have. What are attributes that dogs have? Well, for example, the dog might have a name. The dog might have a breed. A dog could have, um, Oh, what else would a dog have? Let's do this first. Uh, color. A dog could have a group, AKC group. Uh, I'm going to make this simple. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, DOB. I'm not going to make it. I probably should make it a date, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll make it a DOB or make it a string for now. Uh, so da, 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 dog would have a gender. I can use a char for that. A dog, I would like to know. Is it registered? And I'd like to know whether or not it's fixed. So those are all my attributes. Oops, I made them private down here. We're gonna do that later, but for right now, 
we'll make them public. Again, to protect these from people, we really don't want these to be public. But for learning purposes, I'm gonna make them public right off the bat, okay? Oops. All right. Then we're going to drop down. Oops, I got to be inside there. Inside the class. And I'm going to write this. And your constructors are the same name again. So we we'll have public dog. So now I can literally create a dog. And so we're going to save this, go back over to our dog show, and do our first example. So there's our, just like we create uh, scanners or whatever, I just created an instance. And now I can assign things. So I can say my dog, and when I hit the dot there, look it up at the top. So I can make the name, assign it to uh, race. My dog, what is next? Breed, I think. Forget the order, but don't matter. Origin just reflects date of birth. Let's see, what was it? Gender or date of birth? Let's do date of birth. Feels um ten one. Uses uh do do. Oops. Now this is gender, so you only single quotes, right? Because it's a char.
I'm actually going to change this one to false. She's a mixed breed. So you can see here, they had this attributes for a dog. These are the things that I can put in about my dog, okay? So then what I can do is, uh, the system dot out dot print And then This one will be percent C slash N. This one will be percent B slash N. This one will be percent B slash N. I'm going to put another slash n in there, move it down a little bit. So something to that effect. I'll give you a second to catch up. Make sure gender is a C and registration and fixed is a B or it won't work right. run it. Oh, it's not going to work. Forgot to fill in all the variables. So now we got to put in all the variables. So this one will be my dog one dot name, my dog one dot breed, my dog one dot, oops, dot color. Uh, my dog one dot dob. My dog one dot gender. My dog one dot is registered. And my dog one dot fixed is fixed. Now, if I save and run it, there we go. So you can see here, we filled in all the attributes for a dog we created named Grace, who's an Australian Shepherd. And that's our first dog. Okay. So this first one, let's do this.
So this one was created using a default constructor with public attributes. Okay. Let's go back. So let's save that. How you guys doing? Is everybody's running? Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's go back to dog now. And we're gonna overload this default, this public dog here and create a different constructor. Called public dog. And see, so you can't do this, okay? That's not allowed. But I can overload it by putting different uh, attribute or uh, parameters in, okay, that need to be filled with arguments. So I'm going to put in that this dog, we have to put a string, call it name. We have to have a string called breed. We have to have a string called color. We have to have a string called AKC group. We have to have a string called DOB. We have to have a char called gender. We have to have a Boolean called is registered. And we need one that's called uh, Boolean is fixed. And this works like any other. We've been passing uh, variables and that to our um, to our methods. This is the same thing. For this one to work, somebody has to fill in and send to this constructor all these things. Okay, somebody has to do that. So in this case, okay. <laughs> So we got that, 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 that. So we can construct that. And I don't think we need anything else here. Oh yeah, we do. So once we get them, we have to assign them to these ones up here. And this name here, look, when I click on it, it doesn't light this up up here. These are two different variables. If you remember, our variables are, if I declare them here, are only good from here to here. They're not good up here. Likewise, if I click on this, this one doesn't light up, okay? It doesn't because they're not the same variables. So then you might say, well, Doug, why'd you name them the same thing? That's kind of confusing because this could really be anything I want, I could put dog, cat, mouse, whatever, that wouldn't make sense, but I could if I wanted to be an idiot, okay? Um, but that's how you're gonna see it in the book. This is how people do it by convention. I don't know that it's a great idea because you might get confused that this variable is the same as this variable, but this is how we fix that. We say, finally, you get to use the this keyword. So we say this name is equal to name or is assigned name. And this name here is this one up here. This name here is this one right here. So we're saying take this name down here and assign it to this variable up here. This means the word this means in this class. In dog, there's a variable called name. This name is only in this little module or uh, method here. This special constructor method is the only place it's good. So then we have this breed is assigned breed. Then we have this um, color is assigned color. 
and they have to be in the right order, of course. And then this AKC group is equal to this, or is assigned this AKC group. Then this DOB is equal to DOB. Then this gender is assigned this gender. This is registered, is assigned, is registered. And this is fixed, is assigned, is fixed. Okay. So this one here, we call this is a parameterized constructor because it has parameters, okay? This one doesn't, the default doesn't, this one does, okay? This one doesn't have, so I can do this, it's called overloading. So now I can go back to my dog show program and I'm gonna create another dog. And I'm gonna just, let's go ahead here and let's see if we can just copy this and we'll bring it down here. paste it in, okay. and then we're going to go ahead, get rid of all this, change this to dog number two, and this one will be a parameterized constructor. Okay. And then we need to cut the, move this down here. Control X that, move this down. Put this right back up here. Okay, so now we got our dog two. Oh, let's do this real quick. Take this right here, go up to edit, click replace. And what do I wanna replace one with the number two? And then just hit replace all. And these all change to replace all for the twos down here. You can do it by hand or you can do it. I'll do it again to show you how to do it again. So we highlight these. We go to repl uh, replace up here under edit. Replace. We want to replace all the ones with the number two. And then we just hit replace all. And these all become twos down here. All right. But right now, this isn't going to work. Okay, if I ran this right now, I'm not gonna get anything because I don't have where I put in all the attributes. But in using the second one, the parameterized instructor, I have to provide them. So the first one was the name. So I'm gonna just say that's Jasper, it's my other dog. And what breed is Jasper? He's an Aussie. And oops. he is a blue Merle. And he 
his DOB was like, uh, what would it be this year, 10? So we'll just say it was nine, whoops, nine, one, 20, And let's see, what else do I need? His gender, he is a single quote male. And let's see, he is registered. So that'll be true. And he is fixed. What am I missing here? Jasper, Aussie, comma, Bruma, comma, name, breed, color, date of birth, register, gender, registered and fixed. Okay, what's wrong? Got to check on dog over here. So we got name, breed, color, group. Did I put, I didn't put group in, did I? Nope, I didn't. So do, do, do. Group was, uh, he's herding. I forgot to do it on the first one too. Okay, so now you can see instead of doing this here, oops, I'm sorry, this here, we do it in the parameters down here. So let's just run it once before I fix one other thing. And you can see we have Grace up here using our default constructor. And then down here, we have Jasper using our parameterized uh, constructor. Let's fix Grace up here. I think this was my dog one dot AKC, right? Group. And she is a herder also. And then we can come down here. And then I'll need to put that after color here. So that should look like that. So what I did here is I added this line up here, herding. I added this group right here. And then after color down here, it's my dog AKC group. So now if I run it, they both have herding. Oh, this one doesn't yet because I didn't add it down there. So down at the bottom after color, I need to add herding. So after color here, we just hit enter and put um, group. There's 
percent s slash n and then down here after color we add my dog to akc comma and then when we run it we should both have herding there you go herding and herding If we didn't want all the attributes, we don't have to put them in. If we just wanted the list of the dog's names and breed, we could definitely do that. Yeah. So now does everybody have two dogs? Or where do you need me to go? Where do you need me to go now? Or everybody's just wonderful. Not hearing anything. Mine's good. Okay. Nobody else wants to talk, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, we're going to jump back to dog. Okay, so here's the scenario here. This is not good, okay? That users or the person here, again, this is me drawing. I'm the architect on this one, okay? This is me being the architect. I'm drawing or creating the plans for dogs, okay? Over here, this is the carpenter. And if the carpenter can reach these variables, he can change what they are, okay? If I'm gonna control these as the architect, I need to make them private, okay? I'm going to need to make them private at some point. They'll work. They work fine right now. If I make them private, if I go like this and replace public, with private, and replace all those. Oh, it's gonna do this to me today. Hang on a second. Close this thing. And redo it. So I wanna go here, edit, replace. Public with private. Okay. These need to go back to public right here, though. There you go. So now, though, if I go back here, look at all the errors. Why am I getting errors over here? Well, because it can't find them because I locked the user out, the, the builder out, uh, he can't change my blueprint now, okay? I'm not gonna let him change it, okay? So what we're gonna do for now, again, is just go ahead and on your dog show, just go up here and rem all these errors, all this out. Again, this is for, so that we can run it without um, any errors coming up. What do I got here, static void? This guy here should be allowed out of there. 
Okay, so we're back to basically a blank slate over here. We're gonna jump back to dog real quick and we're gonna drop down. And now it says I need setters and getters. If I wanna get to these now to access them from here, I need to create setters and getters. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna say this. And then I'm gonna right click underneath there. And this thing here says insert code. Okay, I'll do it again. I right click down where I want the code to be. I go insert code. I go to getters and setters. I click and this comes up. Well, I want to be able to get to all of them. So I'm going to click on dog. Okay. Up at the top. And I'm going to say generate. And you can see I now have a big list of my setters and getters. I'm gonna go in here and clean them up. Okay, you'll see there's a difference. Setters are void and getters are have a data type. So we just come down and again, in Doug's world, we always line up our uh, braces so that they look pretty. And we know when something's inside of something else. All right, right here, when you get down to the uh, Boolean ones, we're gonna say here, get rid of the extra is and put get in front of it. Same thing down, let's see, where was that one? It was the ones there. In the is fixed, there should be up right here. Just make that get. Like that. Okay. You notice that in the setters, it looks pretty much like what we had up here. Okay. It looks pretty much like that, does it not? Okay. But now I can't get to these up here without going through here. So if I want to get to those, I have to have a get. If I want to put something in there, I have to have a set, okay? So let's go back to our dog show. Drop down about here. And let's go ahead and put in Let's go ahead and copy all this come down a little bit paste that in and undo the oops come on Doug undo these just 
All right. So this one is using a created a third object. And we're going to get rid of all this. And this one, we're going to use a default constructor. with private attributes. And setters and getters. Okay, so we got that. And then we're going to come down here, I'll leave that alone for now. Yep. So now we've got a third dog, we're going to call it dog three. And my dog three dot set. name and in there we're going to say whatever our dog's name is uh fido and my dog three uh set breed will be uh let's call him a collie My dog three dot. What's next? Uh, color. And Is uh, what are collies? They're herding too, I think. Got a bunch of herding animals here. And and let's just make it uh, 12, 12, 25 Christmas of twenty twenty. And remember, this one has to be a char. So I'm going to make, oh, Fido's a male, I guess. And my dog set is registered, I think. That would be. Oh, uh, let's make it true. And my dog three set is fixed. And we'll say that's true. Okay. So now these, these are going to the setter now. They're not going directly to our variables. Then down here, we need to change all these because this one here, first of all, let's do this, highlight those. Uh, let's do this first. Let's close this, go here, go to replace, and it'll be replace to with three, I should be able to hit replace all. There we go. Still screaming at me because we can't go directly to name now. We have to go to get name. And we have to go to get breed. 
and we have to go to get color. And those are method or methods, so you have to put the parentheses at the end and get AKC group. Get DOB. Get gender. Get is registered. That's a capital I now, so get. Capital I is registered. And then get capital I. And somewhere I got an error. Oh, right here is one. Oops, and I'm missing my there and I need to here okay so now that should be good Oop, get breed I'm missing my parentheses okay so now if I run this you can see it works Here's my third dog. Now, again, the first two aren't gonna work because we changed the, well, first of all, we run them out, but they wouldn't work anyway. If I did undo them, we'd get errors because over here in dog, these are private now, okay? So that's my song and dance for today, okay? We're gonna revisit this and make some more changes on Thursday. So make sure you got this part done by then. I'm going to stop sharing now and stop recording.